Hello, my precious people. Welcome to our study this time in the book of Micah, chapter 7, verses 1 to 20. Uh, we are going to see in this chapter the prophet name uh, here lamenting the, the, the sins which his people were committing. And uh, that is from verse 1 to 6 of Micah chapter 7. And we are going to see now uh, describing the comfort which would come to them later. Uh, and uh, what they were supposed to do. They were supposed now to fix their eyes to God. So that God would, uh, would really redeem them. Verse 7, it is the one which talk about that. Therefore, I will look up to the Lord. I will wait for the Lord of my salvation. My God will hear me. So he encourages them to look to God. And uh, they must courageously bear up against the, their sin. And also, they should bear up against the enemy who are mocking them. Uh, verse 8 says, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, until he please my cause, and ex 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 execute right judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall behold his righteousness. Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and the shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes shall behold her, now shall, shall she be trodden down as the mire of the street. So it was they were to bear against the the their enemy who thought that they would be destroyed completely, who are rejoicing in their calamities. So they were to bear with them. And also we are going to see how they were to wait patiently upon the Lord under their rebuke. And how they were to fix their eyes to God throughout. So they were to expect no other man that, that the trouble would continue long and they were to endure to their level best. As we see in the verse 11 to 13, which says, In the, in, in the day that your walls are to be built, in that day shall you decree, shall your decree be far removed. In that day also, he shall come even to you from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress, even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein, for the fruit of their doings. So the disaster was coming, and it was to take a long, a long, long time. Uh, also, they must encourage themselves with God's promises in the answer to the prophet prayers, which we see in verse 14. Feed your people with your rod, the flock of your heritage, which dwell solitarily in the hood. In the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan and in Gilead, as in the days of old, according to the days of your coming, out of the land of Egypt, I will show unto him marvelous things. That is verse 14 and 15. They must also, also foresee the fall of their enemies that were succeeding over them at this instance, verse 16 to 17, which says, uh, The nations shall see and be confounded at their, at their mighty. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. 
that you shall be afraid of the Lord our God at the sort of fear because of you. So we see that, that uh, the database would be frustrated, they would fail, they would not continue succeeding against them. And actually the schemes of the enemy always backfire. And finally, they must themselves uh, see the mercy and the grace of God and his faithfulness to his covenant with that comfortable word. So you see now the prophet concludes actually with even the meaning of his name. So we see that in uh, verse 18 and 20, very powerful. Who is God like unto you? That pardons iniquity and passes by the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. He retains not his anger forever because he delights in mercy. So we thank God for the fact that he delights in mercy and he forgives our transgression. He retains not his anger forever because he delights in mercy. You will turn, you will have compassion upon us. You will subdue our iniquities and, and you will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. You will perform the truth to Jacob and the mercy to Abraham, which you have sought at your fathers from the day of hold. Wonderful. And that is how uh, the book concludes. So welcome and let us journey through this study. By grace of God, we are looking at God. Our eyes are on you, O God. We expect you to teach us. We expect you to, to reveal to us what you would want us, O Lord, even to learn from these written ones which are ever true, which are changing our life, which are changing our situation, which are conforming our will to your will. We look to you, O Father, with the expectation of learning, of being corrected, of being reminded, of being uh, taught of your ways and of your oracles, O Lord, because we believe your word is always a life, your word is always powerful, your word is always active, your word has power to transform our lives and to make us conform to the perfect will of your Son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, uh, teach us God's way and give us grace even to put that which we are learning into practice in the mighty name of Jesus. Our desire it is to conform to the will of God and to live a life that pleases God and to live a life that pursues righteousness and godliness in the name of Jesus Christ so that we may be like our Father who is perfect. That is our desire, O oh God. Blessed be your name. Blessed be my viewers wherever they are that Father they may know you as the only true God, and they may conform to your perfect will all the days of your, their life. That is my prayer for them, and also our generation, O oh, Father, shall know you, and they shall live to glorify you, and to behold your goodness in the land of the living. Let your kingdom come, let your error be done in our life, in our generation, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are our Lord, and you are our Father, and we recognize the fact that there is no God who is like our God, who forgives iniquity, who pardons transgression, and who even put our sins in the depth of sea, that you don't remember them anymore, O oh Lord. Help us that we may continually depend on you and rely on you and trust in your mercy all the days of our life. In the name of Jesus. So welcome, let us journey through this chapter, which has a lot to teachers concerning the oracles of God. So uh, the writing here is uh, 7B, 700 BC and uh, from verse 1 to 6 we are going to see the sins of Israel being reviewed here to them. Their iniquities, their failures and the way they are fallen short of the glory of God over and over Again, so verse 1 to 6. All oh, is me, for I am as when they have gathered the summer fruit 
as the grave gleaning of the vintage, there is no cluster to it. My son desired the first ripe fruit. The good bird is perished out of the hearth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie in wait for blood. They add every man his brother with their net, that they may do evil with both hands, honestly, the prince ask and the judge ask for a reward, and the great man he utter his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. The best of them is has a barrier. The most upright is sharper than a thorn edge. The day of the watchman and the visitation come now shall be their plexivity. Trust you not in your friend, put you not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of your mouth from a that lie in your bosom. For the son dishonors the father, the daughter rise up against a mother, the daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are the men of his own house. So you can see here, there is a lot of, of sins being mentioned, and there are terrible times for these people, whereby we see now even the people who were doing what was right were, were facing challenges due to the corruption which was in the land. So you see the prophet crying out that all oh, unto me, because now he had taught the people concerning what was coming to happen, and we see the people continued to, to rebel. They didn't realize what was at stake. So the prophet here lamented because he made the good man uh, was facing challenges which the evil were, were facing. And he prays to God. He devotes his life to God so that God would have compassion on, on, on them. So we see here the prophet uh, interceding for, for the rest. And that should be the work of the people who are called by the name of God to pray uh, and to lament over the sin of the people. Because there are times many people don't realize what is at stake. So the prophet here lament and uh, intercede to God because of the challenges uh, his people are facing. And it is being compared here with the uh, Asaba fruit which of course was a very good fruit. Uh, so the prophet uh, continues to lament uh, uh, because of what was happening in the book of... Uh, uh, at this time now, the leaders who are ruling you are evil leaders. They, are, they had nothing to do with God's people. And uh, it means now the sins of Israel who arrived, they were mature, they were about to to be repaid because of what they had done. Uh, although they didn't realize what was going on. So, so even as we should look at God, especially when we see the rebellion which people have, it is the time to pray and to plead to God so that he may have mercy upon us. Because at times people are blinded by the evil one that they don't realize, they don't recognize when the danger which is ahead of them. So there were so many wickedness in the country whereby everybody was lying for the blood. Uh, a brother was against a brother. They were hunting each other. Actually, it had become a bad eat society. And everybody was interested with gathering material things. Nobody cared for their nearest neighbor or even nearest relative. So each person was pursuing vanity in the name of prosperity and uh, they did this without uh, without following god's rules they forgot that uh, 
if they were left alone, then life would have no meaning for them. So that they were eager, they were eager to pursue their sin, day in, day out. So there was falsehood. Uh, the leaders were promoting evil continually. They did evil day in, day out. And nobody cared whether there was God or there was no God. So their objective was to do evil. And they used to praise evil continually in the land. So the great man who has wealth and the power to do good is not assumed to, uh, to utter is evil. Uh, all their desires, the judges, the leaders, the priests, the, the, the people who are supposed to protect the weak, they were the very people who are destroying it. So that was the state of this nation such a time like now. And actually at that, this very time now, God was almost near taking it to captivity, allowing them to be tormented by their enemies. So there was no faith in man. People had grown so universally sinful that uh, nobody had confidence with one another. No one at all. Even the, even the relative themselves, they could not share a secret. Actually, there was no friendship because if you could tell your friend anything, they used to betray you. Even in, in the family, uh, we see the, the family members uh, themselves uh, being corrupt. And nobody who could trust their family members. That was the scenario. Uh, at any level, nobody could speak freely with one or another. But we see also that the children were abusive to their parents. And many had no comfort, no satisfaction in their own families and their nearest relation. Imagine this is what we, we read in verse 6. For the son dishonors the father, the daughter rises up against their mother, the daughter in law against their mother in law, and the men's enemies are the men of his own household. There is nothing as terrible as that state, where by now, you are enemy and the people of your very old family. That is the most, most, most challenging situation and the most discomforting situation which you can ever have. So that was the, the, the state of the Israelite at this very time. And actually when Christ quoted uh, this or he talked about this, which would happen at the last time, whereby we see in the book of Matthew chapter 10, Verses 4, which say that Simon, the Canaanite, and the Judite, a Sacariot, who also betrayed him. So, Jesus himself was betrayed by one of his disciples, one of his people whom he had called and he had stayed with, and whom he had eaten with. He was betrayed. So, Luke chapter 21, verse 16, he says, And all of you shall be betrayed both by parents and the brethren. And the kinsfolk, and the friends, and the some of you shall be caused to be put to death. Uh, and all of you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not an heir of your head perish. In your patience, possess all of you your source. So we see that uh, the matter of challenging, or the matter of challenges, the matter of persecution for God's people. It is something which was there. It is something which was promised by Jesus himself and it will always be there. But God declares in the Luke chapter, in the book of Luke chapter, in the, in the book of Luke chapter 21 verses uh, 17 that uh, all of you shall be hated by all men. For my name's sake, but there shall not an heir of your head be perished. Meaning that there will be challenges, but God also promises to protect his people. So when we look at our society in the 21st century, we see a lot of corruption. We see a lot of rottenness in the families. Uh, of course, when the families are corrupt, when the families are rotten, that the same thing reflects in the larger community. And if you are a person there who has faith in God, remember that God will protect you. God will preserve you. 
no matter what is happening. Actually, Jesus declared in Luke chapter 21, verse 18, that everything of the people who love God will be protected. Not single air will be lost. Not even a single part of the air will be lost to those who love God. So let us rest in God's security, knowing that the Lord is with us. Verse 7 to 13, it, it talks about now seeking comfort in God, and we see now the sins of people. This is 7 years in BC. Therefore, we will look at the Lord, and I will wait for the Lord, for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. I will bear the indignation of the Lord, because I have sinned against him, and he will please my cause, and my and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light, and I shall be all this righteousness. The, then she, then she that is my enemy shall see it, and she shall cover her which said unto me, Where is the Lord your God? My eyes shall behold her, now shall she be trodden down as the bear of the street. In the day that your walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to, to you from Assyria, and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress, even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. Notwithstanding the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. So you see the prophet having suddenly complained of the wickedness of the times he lived in. And he fastens upon some consideration for the comfort of himself and his friends. In the reference, uh, we see now the case is bad, but it is not desperate. Yet not there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. So you see that uh, verse 7 here that God uh, was now displeased, but he could reconcile them. He could reconcile them, and uh, the prophet here foresee this. Although they were under, under the wrath of God, such a season like, uh, uh, like that, uh, and they knew that they had deceived, so they recognized that it is because of their sin that is why God was against them. And God was actually against their sin, not against them as a people. Because God loves all people, but God hates all sin. Always understand that, my dear people, that God loves all sinners and God hates all sin. So even if you, have re you are rebelling against God, know that God loves you. What God ate is sin, and God has provided the price for the for the sins. So whenever we are under divine rebuke, that we must just fight God, and we may know that God is righteous. We should repent in humility and recognizing that we are the ones who have erred. We are the ones who have gone astray, and recognize that the faithfulness of God and the love of God upon us. So these people says. They will look at God. So it is important for us to look at God. And when we look at God, God is always so faithful to help us. So the prophet had been complaining that there was no comfort to be which was there. Actually, there was no need to, even to trust to any friend or any relative. But now, he, he, he started now fixing his eyes to the Lord. And even us, when we look around and we realize that there are, there are betrayal everywhere, it is the high time for us to look at God. Actually, blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord. Happy is the person who relies on the Lord. Uh, prosperous is the person who put his trust in the Lord. So we must, we must submit our will to God in, during the time of trouble. It is, it is the high time for us to submit our request 
to God. In humility and in repentance. And when we do that, God you always pardon us. There is no need for us to complain. It is, but there is all need for us to humble ourselves to God so that we may allow God's will to be done for our life. So we must depend upon God to work deliverance for us and put a good issue to our troubles in due time. We must not only look to him, but look for him. Actually, yeah, he says, I will wait for God of my salvation. So they were not only submitting to him, but they were looking to him. And for his gracious return to me. So our greatest distresses, we shall see no reason to despair of salvation. So even during the, the time of challenges, those who have faith in God, they don't despair. They don't become hopeless. They don't actually cry as the others cry. But they look to God, knowing that God is a God of salvation. And for sure, our God is a God of salvation. He is able to save the weak. He is able to bless those who come to him. He is able to forgive all our transgression. If we depend on, on God as the God of our salvation, we must wait for him and for his salvation in his own way and in his own time. So let us see now what we are to do today, even as the church of God, and what the promises God gives us here as we look to him. So by God we will hear me, if the Lord be our God, he will hear our prayers and grant and answer or peace to, to us. So that is how we should expect from God. That God will hear us and God will hear our prayer. Whenever you pray, know that God hears and God answers prayers. So when I fall, I am in danger of being uh, uh, broken into pieces by, by the fall. Yet I shall rise and recover myself. Again, when I fall, I shall not be destroyed. Actually, many psalmists noticed that in the Psalms 7.24. And he knew that though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. Him we are refer to the righteous. And actually, psalmists said this, that uh, the step of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his heart. Glory to Jesus. I am so glad when I see the promises of the Lord that when you are connected to God, you can also fall. You can also fall, but even if you fall, uh, God declares that you are not going to be destroyed because God is going to uphold you with his righteous heart. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. Uh, also, when I sit in darkness, that means when I'm in a situation where I don't know what to do, when I'm in a situation which appears the end of my life, I shall not be discouraged. I shall look to God. The Lord is going to be with me. The Lord is going to comfort me. The Lord is going to instruct me. The Lord is going to teach me. The Lord is going to direct and guide me as a light to my eyes and as a light to my feet. That is what God is going to do to his people. So right now, you could be there. A situation which is dark in your life, it is the high time for you to look unto God. And God is going to order your steps. He will plead my cause and execute judgment for me. Micah 7, 9. If we utterly uh, look to God, the just God, then we should expect that God is our hope and is going to see us through, no matter the challenges which we face today in this dark world. So God is there to preserve us and is there to execute his righteous judgment even upon our enemies. So he will bring me forth to the light and make me shine out of the darkness. And my righteousness shall shine to the glory of God. Actually, Psalms chapter 36, verse 6 says, And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your judgment as the new day. That is when you commit your way to the Lord, when you delight yourself in the Lord, and when you trust in the Lord, and when you don't fret. 
because of the evil doers. So he makes your light to shine. Actually, even in the book of Isaiah 58 verse 10, we read that, And if you draw out your soul to the angry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light rise in, in your obscurity and your darkness be as the new day. So the God declares here, I shall be all this righteousness, and I shall see the equity of his proceedings concerning me and the performance of his promises to me. So that should be our attitude. So we see now here, the enemies were insulting the Israelites during this challenging and trying time. And that is what the enemies do. When they see the people of God facing challenges, they think that is the end of them. And they rejoice. And they rejoice. But God knows the ways of the righteous. But I say, rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. So that should be our attitude all the time. That even when we are facing challenges, we should know that is not the head because we are going to rise up again. Actually, the Bible says, even if the righteous person falls seven times, yet he shall rise up again. So there is the hope of God's people all the time. Then she that is my enemy shall see it, and the shame shall cover her, which said unto me, Where is the Lord our God? My eyes shall behold her. Thou shalt see be trodden down as the bear of the street. So at times, uh, our life looks as if God is not with us. And that is the time when the enemies of the kingdom of God rejoice. But God declares that uh, a time is coming when he is going to restore his people. And once God's people are restored, then the enemies are going to realize that there is true living God. So my dear friend, don't give up on God. But keep on trusting the Lord and relying on Him. And God is going to see you through. Because all the promises of God are a yes and amen. So the enemies were very proud uh, during the distress of God's people. And they were even mocking their God. They were asking, where is your God? And even now in your life, maybe people have been mocking your God. When they see you suffering and you are trusting in the Lord, you are depending on the Lord, you are not as corrupt as they are. You don't do what they do, and they appear, and it appears as if your life has no hope. They are mocking you. They are asking you, where is your God? So keep on trusting in him. A time is coming for restoration, and when God is going to restore you, they are going to see and they are going to realize that better to trust in the Lord than to trust in the princes. Actually, even David observed this in the book of Psalm chapter 42, verse 10, which says, As with your sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, where they say daily unto me, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope you in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the earth of my countenance and my God. So it is a common practice for the enemies to rejoice and to mock our God during our low season. But the time comes during our light season when our God restores us and God is glorified. So uh, fix your eyes unto God. Uh, also Psalms 115 verse 2, David observed this. Why should the alien say, where is now their God? So it is the, it is the common practice of the people who don't recognize God, to mock on God uh, when we are facing challenges, whereby they think that God has abandoned us. God has abandoned God's people. To the Israelites, that is what was happening. They thought that God had forgotten them. God was not able of protecting them. But we see God being so faithful and consistent in keeping his covenant throughout his dealings with his people. God's Promises never failed. Although they failed all the time, God never failed. And I believe even today, today he referred to 21st century, God has not, has not failed. God will never fail. He is faithful. We, we trust in him. We depend on him. We rely on him. We are there to him. And we are assured victory and success 
in the every aspect of our life. So yeah, they reflected you're the God of Israel as the Adikite and the faithful God. That is the Aviate, the pagans. And even now, there are people who think that there is no true living God. But keep holding it to God and God will come to you. So, so the people of God here, they were now to bear the insult. And he says, he tells the enemy, rejoice not against me, O oh my enemy. I am now down but shall all, but there shall not always be doubt. When my God appears for me, then, then my enemy will see it, and they are going to be disappointed. And the expectation which they thought that uh, the people of God would be destroyed will be disappointment. And even today, uh, to, today means in the new dispensation, the enemy thinks that uh, the people of the kingdom of God will be destroyed. They don't recognize they don't understand God's agenda with these people. And when they see them facing challenges, they think that is the end. But God comes and they uplift and reinforces his people. And these people move. They mount up. They succeed. They excel. They overcome the challenges. They overcome the iniquity. And God heals them. And God restores them. And God washes them, God cleanses them, God purifies them, and God makes them acceptable. Actually, the enemy don't recognize how God deals with humanity. The enemy is always uh, at astonishment because he doesn't really realize, he doesn't recognize how grace of God works in the life of his people. So deliverance of the church will be the confusion of our enemies. And their shame shall be double. When as they have uh, succeeded upon God's people, so they shall themselves be, be defeated forever. So though the land continued a great, aware, desolate, yet it shall be at length uh, restored again. We see exaltation shall not come until after it has been desolate. Actually, that is what happened. And as we, we are talking now, Israel has been restored, although not fully. It shall be fully restored when Christ comes and reigns again. So it is for the fruit of their drinks, their evil drinks, which had made them to go to captivity and which had made them to be tormented. So for they must expect to smart a great well for the world shall know that God ate sin, even in his own people. Actually, that was the purpose of God allowing Israel to go to captivity. So that people would know that God ate sin, no matter who commits sin, even if it were their own, his own people whom we had called by his own name, they were to face the justice of God. But at the same time, God also was merciful to them. So when it does come, it shall be a complete salvation. And it seems to refer to their deliverance out of Babylon by Cyrus which Isaiah about this time prophesied. So Isaiah and Micah, they were contemporary. They prophesied at the same time. And of course, this also foresees the prophecy of Christ coming. Cyrus was a picture of Christ, who was a type of Christ who came to redeem us. Uh, so when Cyrus was in the power, he decreed that uh, the, the Jews were to return to their land. And actually not only that, but he also erupted them to build their city. He provided the resources which were needed. So Jerusalem and the cities of Judah shall be again uh, restored. Their walls were to be rebuilt. Their habitation was to be to be restored. That was that is what the Bible declares. And also Isaiah chapter 44 verse 28 says that uh, that says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd and he shall perform all my pleasure. He may be saying to Jerusalem, you shall be built. And to the temple, your foundation shall be laid. So that is what uh, Prophet Isaiah had prophesied concerning the rebuilding of Jerusalem and as King Cyrus. And at this time now, remember, uh, this actually even the Medes and the Persians are not known. They are not in the superpower. But their time came when they, they rose to the position of power. So God would always come to be fulfilled. That is why we should trust in the Lord. And depend on him and rely on him because God is always faithful and God keeps his word. We thank God also for Christ who came, who is our redeemer, who has taken away our sins. When you come to Christ Jesus, 
you are CDR no longer counted for you. So if you are there and you have no connection to your Savior, come back to home through faith in Jesus Christ and you shall be restored. And your life shall never be the same. Uh, your life shall never be the same again. Uh, because the Lord, our God is God. Because chapter 7 verse 12 says, In that day also he shall come even to you from Assyria and from the fortified cities, and from the fortress even to the river, and from sea to sea, and from mountain to mountain. So you shall come even to the to they, having liberty to return, and they had to return from Assyria, where the ten tribes were carried away. Uh, though it was far away, God declares that he would restore them. God declares that he would have mercy upon them, and pardon them. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So God, our God is a God who restores. Our God is a God who restores hopes. Our God is a God who restores families. Our God is a God who restores life. Our God is a God who restores situation. Our God is a God who restores health. Our God is a God who restores his people. Without God, because there is nothing which is too difficult to our God. All things are possible and in the aim we live, in the aim we move. In the aim, we have our being. In the aim, all things are possible. When we trust in the aim, when we depend on him, when we rely on the aim. Micah chapter 7, verses 14 to 20. It's about the prayer which the prophet made and the praise which he meant to God. Separate your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance, which lives by itself in your forest. In the fatter of pacta lands, let them feed in the basin and in glad as in days ago. As in days ago. Verse 15. As in the days when you came out of Egypt, I will show them my wonders. Nations will see and be ashamed, deprived of all their power. They will lay their hands on their mouth and their ears will become deaf. They will lick dust like a snake, like creatures that grow on the ground. They will come trembling out of their dens. They will turn in fear to the Lord our God, and they will be afraid of you. Who is a God like you, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will trend our sins underfoot, and they hurl all our iniquities into the depth of the sea. You will be true to Jacob, and they show mercy to Abraham, as you pleased on earth to our fathers in days long ago. So we are going to discuss those uh, uh, verses, the seven verses from verse 14 to 20. Uh, which is the part of continuation of Mika chapter 7. Uh, this is very encouraging, actually. And now this prophecy is 7 years under BC. And we see the prophet prayer to God so that God would take care of his own people. And uh, so, because God was about now to deliver his people uh, up. So, even as when we realize that uh, there are some of the people we know who are rebellion to God, it is important to pray to God so that uh, God may have mercy towards them because God is a merciful God. And whenever we pray, God hears our prayer. So the people of Israel are here called the flock of God's inheritance uh, or the staff, or the staff, the flock of inheritance. So God had chosen Israel, as you know, to be his own people. God had selected them through their forefather Abraham, who was initially praying moon God. But God chose him out of his country, and uh, he selected him, just like the way also us we have been selected by God, out of our own uh, sin. And God has made us to become acceptable through the blood of Jesus Christ. So they were now a desolate people, of course, when they were, they were in the land of captivity, they were scattered. 
when they went to the land of captivity, they were scattered in Oroba. over. Actually, at this time now, when the prophet is free, the people of the northern kingdom are already in the captivity. They have already been taken by the Assyrians. And now they are scattered all over, all over the mountains, like the beast without the shepherd. So he prays that God will defend them there with his rod. Uh, that is, he will take care of them in their captivity. And this is the northern kingdom. Already they are in captivity. Assyrians have invaded them in 722 BC, and they have been taken. So he prays that God will take care of them. He will protect them. He will provide for them. And do the part of one good shepherd to them. That is why now he says, Let your rod and the staff comfort them. Even in that dark valley where they, they are nothing good. So let them be governed by the rod, not the rod of their enemies, for they are your people. So, if, so God has a way of preserving his people even when they are facing challenges. Even when they are going astray. Even when they are... Even when, when they are rebelling against God, God does never really forsake his people. He is always with them. And the love of God is constant. What happens is we simply reap the fruit of our labor. But on the side of God, God remains loving, caring, and considerate concerning our life. God never abandons us. God never leaves us. God never forsakes us. Even when he is... Uh, he is bringing his justice upon us. So he prays that God would in due time bring them back to feed in the plains of Bashan and in Gilead and they no longer be fed in the wounds and the mountains. So that is what he says here. Let them feed in Bashan and in Gilead as in the days long ago. So these are the places within Israel. And now prophet, this prophet Micah hoped that uh, in due time these people the Israelites will be restored back to their own land. So, so some people now here, they think this prayer is equivalent to what Christ Jesus prayed as the great shepherd. Christ is the great shepherd, and we see in the book of John chapter 17, even Christ praying, the prayer which he prayed, a very, a very, very, very powerful prayer, which it is important for every believer to familiarize uh, himself or herself with it. Now, uh, we see also God's promise in the answer to this prayer. And God now answers the prayer. That tells you and me that God answers prayer. He answers prayer which is prayed in, in faith. So the prophet prayed that God would feed them and do kind things for them. But you see here now God answering that he would show them wonderful things. Verse 15 says, As in the days when you you came out of Egypt, I will show them my waters. So that was the response. That uh, God would show them wonders uh, as he had declared. Also in the book of Psalms 17, 7. So you are marvelous, loving kindness. Oh, you that save my, by your right add them which put their trust in you from those that rise up against them. So God would give them wonders. He would do that for them. Because uh, uh, they were his own people. As, as just he had delivered them from Egypt through waters, God would do it again. And actually that is what God did. Uh, after 70 years were over, when the people of Judah were delivered from captivity, it came as a kind of water, although it was different water as compared to the one which he did uh, in Egypt. So Christ is our redeemer and he does ma wonders. Christ is does wonders. So in God's former favors to, to us are a patterns for our future favors. So when we learn what God was doing years ago, it is an indicator that even in the future, he is the same God because the Bible declares that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you will do that for which uh, uh, you are done with the amazement. Verse 16. And 17 it says, Nations will see and be ashamed, deprived of all their power. They will lay their hands on their mouth, and their ears will become deaf. They will lick dust like a snake, like creatures that crawl on the ground. They will come trembling out of their dens, 
that you will return in fear to the Lord our God and they will be afraid of you. So you can see the result of the wonders which God would do. So uh, for them, it would be a matter of amazement. Amazement. And the other nations would take notice of it. And after taking the, the, the notice, they would glorify their God. With the, the deliverances which uh, God was to show them, it could, be a matter, it could be a matter of water. So, even the people who had insulted God's people, when Israelites were in, were in captivity, the aliens thought that God had forsaken his people forever, and they were laughing at, at them. So they would be confounded. They would be confused. They would be surprised at the victory which God would give. So it is critical that uh, even when we see people suffering because of their sin, of course, we should not really laugh at them. We should not uh, conclude that their hand has come. God is just correcting them. And after correcting them, he restores them when they come back to their senses and when they call upon the name of the Lord. So that is why when the scripture says, do not laugh, oh my enemy. Actually, yeah, yeah. Well, oh my enemy, even when I fall, I will rise up again. Yeah, so so those that are and, and confronting uh, uh, God's people, they would now uh, come to him in humility. And those who are opposing God's people also, we are told here they would be frustrated because they would lick the dust like, uh, like serpent, meaning that uh, the curse would be upon them as it was upon the serpent. When, when it was proclaimed that cast it was to be in Genesis chapter 3, 14. So they shall be brought to the lowest uh, level, which can never be imagined. They, they will be dispirited. They will, they, will, they will be humbled. And they will leak dust. Leaking dust here implies that uh, they will be brought very low, low position, the least position which somebody can become of. And that is exactly what happens when we ignore God, when we oppose God's are doing so those who are proud they are brought to law that is what the scripture declares so they would be assumed like the worm of the earth none of them would rise so when god didn't want us for his people uh, then uh, the fear came upon all the nations even during the time of esther we realize when god was with them the fear came all the uh, among all the 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 neighboring countries. So they shall be afraid of the Lord our God, and they shall fear because of the Lord of Israel. So even us, when God promotes us, when, protect, when God protects us, when God sustains us in a miraculous way, then the people who don't know God, they are surprised. They don't realize what is what really is happening. And of, of course, everything happens to the glory and the honor of our Maker. The final verses, the final three verses, Verse 18, 19, and 20 are so powerful because it is an acknowledgement of God's mercy. God's mercy is an acknowledgement upon those who depend in the Lord. So I read those verses, who is a God like you? And actually that is the meaning of the, of the word Mika. Who is God like you? And actually there is no God who is like our God. Who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will train our sins underfoot, and our or draw our iniquities into the depth of the sea. You will be true to Jacob and show mercy to Abraham as you planned on, on earth to your fathers and in days ago. So, so you see here now. The character of God being shown here in verse 18, that God is the one who pardons our sins because he's a merciful God. So, so the prophet here realized that God would bring his people back from captivity. And consequently now, he recognizes uh, the character of God as a God who pardons uh, sins due to his mercy. And... Uh, and the pardoning of sin is the foundation of all covenant mercy. So this is the so so the prophet he actually is even astonished because he asks a question: Who is God like you? Uh, remember, 
uh, in previous chapters, chapter 1, all the way we have, we have been seeing now God bringing the word of judgment due to the crimes, due to the rebellion which the Israelites were having. And for sure, Prophet Micah realized that these people would go to captivity and some of them have already gone. And now, God here also declares that uh, he would bring them back, he would restore them. And actually, when now the prophet pondered, when he was uh, pondering all this, he concluded that God is incomparable. And, and the reason why he is incomparable, it is because of the way he forgives sins of his people. So there is no one, no one who is like our God. And, and no wonder now even the, the meaning of the word Mika, it is who is like God. So we can learn the following concerning uh, what this prophet was wondering about the character of God. So God's people were the remnant of his inheritance and they were changed with many transgression. And actually being but a remnant, very few. They were very few compared to the people who are in the old world. So one would hope that they should all be very good, but they were not, not so. So God's children have their spot and they often offend their father. I think that is very critical. And many people fail to realize this uh, because they are quick to judge when they see the people who are called by the name of the Lord make mistake. Even them, even those who have acknowledged God, they are not perfect. They are being perfected day in, day out. Actually, the perfection will come when Christ will appear. He is the one who will perfect us. But now the, the process of sanctification, it is, it is positional and progressive. So sanctification is both positional and progressive, meaning that it is something which is continuous. Uh, to the Israelites, we see God was always dealing with them and they always failed. So even you, when you fail, never think that God does not love you. God's love to you and to me is always constant. All the time, his love is internal. His love is everlasting. So God's people have their own spot. The next thing we are learning is that the gracious God is ready to pass by and pardon the iniquity and the transgression of his people upon their repentance and the return to him. So God's people are a pardoned people. And to this, they owe their, their all. So when God forgives sins, he passes it by. He does not punish it as justly he might. He might. But in dealing with the sinner according to uh, the way the sinner is willing to accept his sin. So God's, God forgives sins. He is gracious. And he forgives iniquity and transgression. Glory to God. What is not for, the, for that nature of God? None of us would really have stood. Because all of us, we have sinned. We have fallen short of the glory of God. There is no one who is righteous. Even as we see Apostle Paul declaring in the book of Romans chapter 3, 10 and 20. Three. So we are also learning that uh, though God may for a time lay his own people under the token of his displeasure, yet he will not retain his anger forever. Actually, the anger of the Lord lasts for a short time and he relents from uh, sending calamity to us. That is why now, because we are his people, it is provided you are a human being, realize that you are the image of God. All people, all human. They have the image of God. God has placed this image on you. And that is why he paid the price on your behalf. That is why he paid the price on my behalf. Because of our of the image of us, which he has. So God's intention, it is to protect his image in us. And that is why now God does everything possible for us. Sending his word, sending a message of warning us, reminding us now and then. So that we may come back to him as a loving father. And God now is compassionate. Uh, he does not always uh, keep his anger forever. We are also learning that uh, the reasons why God pardons sin and keeps not his anger forever are all taken from within himself. It is because in delight in mercy and the salvation of sinners is what he has pleasure in, not their death. Actually, we read in the book of uh, Ezekiel that God does not take pleasure in the death of any sinner. But God desires that all sinners turn away from their sins and come to him. And when they come to him, God pardon. 
So God initiates the process of forgiveness. Actually, God draws men closer to himself. He is the one who initiates. All otherwise, men, they have the potential of destroying themselves completely. So the glory of God in forgiving sin is as in other things. It is incomparable, without compare. So there is no God like unto our God who forgives sins. So, so is, is forgiveness, is mercy, is love, is infinite. It is above us. It is above any human being. And all those that have experienced pardoning of sin cannot but admire the mercy of God. So anyone who is in Christ Jesus and who realizes that they are transgressing the iniquity, have been pardoned, they have been blotted out, we can only stand at awe of God. We can only stand amazed and see how God is and declare here that God is incomparable. The way he forgives sins, the way he is merciful, the way he is compassionate, no one who can really be compared with him. Our only one that pardoning mercy will be good evidence of our interest in it. So when we realize that this is a wonderful gift from God, it means it will help us to keep off from rebellion. And by grace of God, we shall continue to pursue righteousness as we are told in the book of Matthew chapter uh, 6, verse 33 and 34, that you seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And then God assures us that uh, other things will be added to us. So we take to ourselves the comfort of that mercy and all the grace and the truth that go along with it. So God's people are to look back with praises and thank, thanksgiving upon God's pardoning their sins. So they look forward with assurance upon what he would yet further do for them. So as God's people, when, when we reflect how, what God has done to us, the way God has forgiven us, actually the Bible declares even in the book of uh, Psalms that as far as east is to the west, that is how God has forgiven us all our iniquities and our transgressions. So when we, we look back and we see the forgiveness of God, that now gives us assurance of the greater things which God has in store for us. So you will renew his favors to us. You will return again. You will have compassion with, with us. Again and again, he is going to have compassion with us. Because his mercy are new every morning. His loving kindness is new every morning. You will return us to himself. And you return us to us. And have mercy upon us. So you will renew us. You will prepare and qualify us for his favor. So it is God who qualifies us. It is God who makes us even be acceptable to him. So you will subdue our iniquities when he takes away the guilt of sin through the blood of Jesus. So you will break the power of sin, the penalty of sins and, and the presence of sin that may not have dominion over us, that we may not fear sin, nor be led captive by it. Actually, sin is an enemy that fight against us. Sin is, the, is, a, is a tyrant that oppresses us. Nothing less that might or might can subdue it. So great is his power in God. So when we submit our will to God, God help us to overcome this monster in the name of sin, whose fruit is death. So if God forgive the sin that has been committed by us, he will subdue the sin that dwells in us. And in that, there is none like him. No one who can be compared with our God who forgives our sins who pardons our iniquities, who cleanses and who purifies us, so we should, uh, we should open him, who takes away the corruption, the death, the nature, the carnality in us, and gives us a new life. We, there is no one who can be compared with our God. And God does not only leave us that way, but he has given us grace which is sufficient to make us now live a victorious life in Christ Jesus, day by day, uh, moment by moment. Thanks be to God, who leads us into victory day by day through the power of the Holy Spirit. So you will confirm. You will confirm this good work and you will provide that which is required. All the grace which is required is going to provide, is going to supply. As, as indeed to the Israelite, when he delivered them from the land of captivity, he, he, he not only delivered them, but he was with them to provide for them, to protect them, to safeguard for them, to go ahead of them. He fought for them, he was with them. He never left them, he never forsaken them. And even as God will never leave us, 
you will never forsake us. He is with us until the very end. As even Christ declared when he was commissioning his disciples that they were to go to the uttermost world, preaching the good news, and for sure, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will, he will be with them. And even now, God is with us. So may we take courage in that. So may God be our courage that he is with us. All their sins shall be cast there without the exception. So here God declares that his transgressions shall not be mentioned unto him. They are blotted out as clown which never appears more. Actually, Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 22 says this, All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. That is when a wicked person forsake his wickedness and decide to follow the ways of the Lord. God declares that uh, he is going to forgive that wicked person and his sins will not be remembered anymore. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. This is very encouraging. So we are also learning that uh, he will perfect that which concerns us with his good work. We will do all that for us. He will do all that for us with our case requires which he has promised. So verse 20, it is the final verse. We will be truth. You will be true to Jacob, that is God, and so much to Abraham, as you pledged on earth to, to our fathers than days long ago. So our God is the same who was, who is, and who never change. The promise is seen to, to be merciful to Abraham, and God actually kept the, that promise. Remember, God declared in the, in the Genesis chapter 12 that uh, through you, Abraham, I will bless the whole world. So the promise there, it is also about the promise of Jesus coming, who came and died for the whole world. So the promises of God are a yes and amen. And God is a merciful God. He keeps his gracious promise to Abraham and even to us, you will keep them. God is a covenant keeping God. God will never violate his covenant. He always makes sure that he has fulfilled his covenant. So may we be as as our Father, who keeps His covenant, so with the, so with the, with all the covenant which He has given, He ratifies it, He fulfills it, He seals it. He has never sown and failed to fulfill. Glory to God, because our God is a covenant-keeping God, and even as actually it is very critical for us as people who are called by the name of God to keep our covenant with God first of all and also with one another, especially when it comes to the covenant of marriage, which is abiding and which is divine. It is important for people not to take it lightly, because when you break that covenant, uh, then you destroy your own blessings, and you attract curse to yourself and to your generation. So our God is a covenant-keeping God, and he requires us to be faithful also to the covenant which he has given us so that we may enjoy his blessings and so that we may be satisfied in him all the days of our life. So may we realize that our God is incomparable, particularly when we consider the way he pardons our sin and draws them into the deep seas of forgetfulness. So God does not uh, keep a record of evil when you come to him. Actually, in Christ Jesus, we are imputed righteousness. In Christ Jesus, our filthiness is never seen, but Christ is the one who is seen because he is the mediator between God the Father and the human. And he took our place and he is the one who lives to intercede for us. So don't allow the enemy to keep on tormenting you, reminding you of yesterday. And now you are in Christ Jesus. Behold, if anyone who is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, the old has gone, the new has come. So know that you provided you have accepted Jesus Christ to be your savior, you are a new creature. Even if you could be having some element of Egypt, Egypt with you, know that God is working through you. And soon or later, he is going to, to make you complete. He is going to make you oh, Don't you allow enemy to keep on tormenting you, reminding you of what you and done. Provided you are in Christ Jesus, then everything else becomes new. You begin a new life. You begin a new, a new journey. Where by now the Holy Spirit lives in you. Actually, you die to self. And you no longer count yourself what you used to, to count. You no longer value the carnality which you used to value. 
in all his practices. You put them to death by grace of God, day by day, moment by moment, and you become conformed to our Father. Our Father is a perfect Father and He requires us to be perfect as He is. So may God bless us and keep us and may God give us grace to realize that we have been forgiven and we should no longer walk as strangers, but we should walk in the freedom which Christ has given us. May we now, now not allow the enemy to steal us through making us to rebel against our Maker, but rather may we continue connecting to the source of our life, because provided we are connected to the source of life, then we are assured life and eternity, because Christ declared that if anyone who has this one's of mine and believe in him, him who sent me, he has already crossed from death and he has eternal life. I want to desire that every person in the whole humanity shall desire to have this eternity which is in Christ Jesus and in Christ Jesus that is even where our life becomes fulfilling as we embrace the, the, the principles of God and as we live for the principles of God. So may God bless you and keep you. Uh, we thank God for the grace he has given us to go through the book of Mika, which is very relevant in our 21st century, my prayer is that all these lessons which we have studied, we are going to apply them and we are going to put them into practices. The mistake which Israelites did, the way they rebelled, they rebelled against God, is my prayer as a generation, as a society, we are not going to repeat the same. Rather, we are going to learn from their mystic and we are going to obey our God so that we may enjoy all the covenant promises which God has as promised us in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you and keep you. We are going to start a new book, a new book, which is the book of Nahum, which is our next uh, point of concentration, or it is our next point of focus by the grace of God. Uh, see you in the next study in the book of Nahum. God be with you and keep you.